Graham Schuler. I'm a scientist. I do brain research, not, oh, not uh, looking at the brain physically, but looking at the brain electrically. I'm interested in the brain as a generator of electrical signals, and I'm interested in exploring it and seeing what we can learn out of these signals, see how we can examine the brain electrically and perhaps find other ways of communicating than using our muscles. Okay, that's the last. Right. Okay, Gord, do you want to... Uh, Adjust the probe now, and we'll we'll just get a preliminary sort of a position in there, and then uh, take a look and see what we have on the screen. Are you happy with the electrodes, Rich? I think it's in a good place. Okay. Okay. Now then, take a look and see what we have, if anything. Okay. Right. Well, we'll make a, we'll make a, let's say we'll do 100, eh? We'll do 100 now, and then you get the recording of this, and uh, you give me a nice stimulus, uh, or we'll say maybe about once a second, eh? Okay. You're gonna average this over how long? Well, I think you're gonna take this two minutes, aren't you? Yeah, well, give me 100 over the two minutes. I can just barely hear it now. If you can just adjust it up a little bit more. Good. I think that's fine. Okay, that will, I think this will be a good run. research, studies in aerodynamics are another field where scientific discipline and the spirit of innovation complement each other. This way, research has a tendency to progress from problem to discovery, 
and from discovery to problem. Herein lies its dynamic. This is the reason why research is developing in every imaginable direction, according to individual circumstances, needs, talents, or inspiration. For instance, the experimental tank, the counterpart of the wind tunnel, permits the study of scaled down ship's hulls. In this case, preoccupation with efficiency predominates. But man occupies a considerable place in the investigations of the scientist. Whether the concern be organic transplants or the pacing of the heart through electric impulses, man, even more than the dog, is an excellent guinea pig. Subject or object, observer, or observed, sometimes both, how will man react to his own evasion of his traditional habitat? This is one of the burning questions in research today. The need, acute among the young, to question everything, even the commonplace, is certainly related to the investigations of the scientist. Did not Louis Pasteur, brilliant dissenter of the last century, defy the orthodoxies of his time? Increased capabilities of man, now able to cross the frontiers in space which nature appeared to have delineated for him, will create new problems and new research. And for man to reach the point where he can move about in the cosmos, revolutionary scientists had to begin where futuristic novelists left off. The centrifugal test is but one stage in the selection of candidates for flights to explore space. Another space, the resonant emptiness of the anechoic chamber, provides other fields of investigation. In it, man can hear his own heartbeats with extraordinary precision. The study of noise, however, is motivated by more practical considerations, such as soundproofing. That is to say, a happy mixture of noise and silence.
Hiroshima, the symbol of man's anguish, also stands for the efforts he has been making to protect himself. Some real guinea pigs have a better chance of survival than others. They have received injections of hormones which affect calcium metabolism. scientists search for protection against radiation, pollution continues to attack life and defy science. Pollution is an extremely difficult problem because it presupposes solutions which are technologically feasible while being compatible with the present direction of our civilization. Or is it possible that this civilization in some unpredictable manner might choose new directions? again that a new generation of scientists might reconcile the irreconcilable. <laughs> 